Here we are, my net. So welcome everyone. I'm excited to be here to teach this gentle class. So this is uh, now a weekly community class. It will be for the next following weeks, hopefully not for too long, so that we can all go back to our mat, but for the next following weeks, as long as we are in shelter in place, it will be um, a weekly community class and it will be free. But if you feel like you would like to support the studio, you can go uh, to Breeze Together's website and uh, pay what you can to support the studio and the teachers. All right. So for today, we also will need blocks again, a blanket or whatever you like. So we start on our back. So come down on the mat. And if you can, come into Shavasana, straightening the legs. If that doesn't feel right in your low back, certainly bend the knees. And then arrive. Allow yourself to arrive. If you want, you can bring one hand on the belly, one hand on the chest or the ribs. And then connect to the rhythm of your breath. Feeling your inhale and feeling your exhale. And inviting the breath to become a little bit deeper and a little bit fuller. But there's no rush. So just notice how you breathe right now. And then either keep the hands on your body or bring the arms along the body. We have a few more breaths here in Shavasana. So allow your body to sink into the ground. Notice which parts of your body are touching the ground. Still noticing your breath. So by bringing awareness to the breath, by allowing ourselves to be still and just to observe, we start to shift from doing to being. And maybe you also notice a shift from thinking to knowing. So that's the magic of yoga. We connect to our inner selves. Sometimes that monkey chatter in our mind, it's overwhelming. But by using the tools of yoga, connecting to the breath, feeling our body, there a shift can happen. Take one more breath. Let's bring the knees to the chest one at a time. Pump the knees a few times, so maybe even your tailbone lifts up. And then bring the feet down, have the knees bent, and then from here let's move with or work with a few subtle movements, so working with movement in the spine. So with the next exhale, pull the belly in and press the low back flat. And then as an inhale, arch the spine, so pull the low back away from the ground. Exhale, belly pulls in, tailbone long. And then inhale, arching the spine, letting the low back, the low ribs move away from the ground. So do that a few times. It's more subtle movement. So check in, feel how the hips come into a forward toe and into a backward toe. 
Notice what's your range of motion. And also notice the quality of this movement. Is there some tightness? You can do this movement slow or very slow. We have two more here. And if you want to add a little bit more, we're actually doing a few more. So with your next exhale, you also can push the heels into the ground. Maybe the table lifts a little bit more. And then with an inhale, the feet get a little bit lighter. So exhale, the belly pulls in, heels push down. And then when you arch your spine, then let the chin come a little bit closer to your chest. So with pressing the low back down and then exhale, the chin moves away from the chest. And then with an inhale, arching up the spine, the chin comes a little bit closer to the chest. Now do about two more. Feeling this wave going through your spine. And come back to your neutral spine. From here we lift the right foot. And first let's draw a few circles just from the ankle. Let your toes move as well. So let them spread and curl. And go the other way. From here bend that right knee and bring the leg over. So the right leg over the left leg. And it's not so much a figure four. It's more thigh to thigh. Bring the arms out in a T. And then check in whether that feels good in the shoulders, maybe wiggle around a little bit. And then with your next inhale, let's drop the knees over towards the right side. So towards the side of the top leg, any amount. And then with an exhale, we come back to center, back to neutral. We do that a few more times. So with an inhale, coming into a stretch, into the twist. So the knees drop to the same side, they stay on the right side. And then there's an exhale, coming back to center. So about three more. So allowing the legs to be heavy, you're rolling over your left foot. So the foot stays connected to the ground. And then there's an exhale, you come back to center. Maybe you add a movement for the head. So when the knees go towards the right, let the head roll to the opposite side. Okay, coming back. And actually now let's do two more. On your own. Just feel what's going on around your hips. The spine. And we come back to center. All right, we release the legs. And then we switch, bringing the left leg up, drawing a few circles from the ankle. Going the other way, moving the toes as well. All right, and then from here, we bring the left leg over the right, or your second leg. So the right foot, the bottom foot stays on the ground. The arms adjust them again to make them feel right. And then from here we drop the knees over now to the left side, to the side of the top leg. And then with an exhale we come back to center. So with an inhale coming into the twist, into the stretch. And then with an exhale back to center. So go on your own. Notice whether this side feels different than the other. Maybe allow the head to move to the opposite side. And go as deep as you like to, or as little as you feel like it. And then we do one more. Come back to center, mind the feet, 
widen the feet a little bit more so that they are met with the path. Arms, either they stay in a, um, in a T or cactus, maybe they go more over your head. And then let the knees go from side to side. So everything what I suggest here today is an invitation. So you can try it out, you can do, you can go as deep as you want to. You also can skip whatever movements. So check in what your body needs and how you need to modify. Come back to center, bring the arms along the body. Evolve the feet again underneath the knees, so the heels are more underneath the knees. We come back to that spinal angulation, the movement of the spine. So with an inhale, we arch the spine. With an exhale, we pull the belly in. The tailbone comes down, presses down. And then with the arms along the body, with the next inhale, now reach the arms over your head while you arch your spine. And then with the next exhale, lift up, if you can, curl and reach forward. And then inhale, lowering the arms behind you, arching the spine. And then exhale, coming forward, reaching. And then inhale, arching your spine, arms behind you. And then do a few more. Go into your ability, move with your breath. Maybe... Just working a little bit, maybe going a little bit deeper. So maybe the next time you're curling up, maybe the tailbone lifts a little bit more. And then do about three more. And when you're inhaling and you lower, then also feel this arch, this deep arch in your spine. And then the last one. And release. All right. Bring the arms along the body or wherever they want to go. Take a breath. And notice how you feel. So from here, let's bring the right knee into the chest, wrapping the hands around. And if you like, you can straighten that left leg. So bring the knee a little bit closer, maybe pump a few times. And then from here, lift that left leg, so the straight leg, an inch or two from the ground, if you like. Maybe stay here. Feel how your belly draws in and the low back presses down. Maybe you lift, lift your head up and bring your forehead a little bit closer towards the knee, curling up a little bit more. Maybe stay here, or maybe, if available, you grab coming more forward, the ankle, maybe the foot. Maybe you curl up a little bit more. Maybe you stay here, or maybe you release the arms. And you hold the pose, but you don't hold the breath. Take one more, one more breath, and release, coming down. Keep that right knee bent. Use the left hand to guide the right knee over, so right knee over towards the left side. Now lift your hips up a little bit and scoot them more to midline. So the left hip more underneath the right, and adjust your body coming into a spinal twist. About two or three breaths. If you're Right shoulder, so the shoulder, the arm that is opposite towards the knee. If that doesn't feel right, bring the arm in. Take one more breath. And release. Coming back to center, center your hips, wiggle. And we do the other side, second side. So knee to the chest. Either knee for now bent or coming down already straight. And then pump first the left knee, the second knee towards the chest. Notice how that feels. And then from here, let's straighten, if you can, if you want, that right leg and lift it an inch or two from the ground, maybe three. 
take a breath, maybe stay here, just feeling your belly working here, or you curl up, bring the forehead closer towards the knee. So you can go in stages. Next one would be to grab the foot or the ankle, or whatever is the way that was. So curling up a little bit more to a little ball, half ball. Maybe staying here or maybe you bring the arms to the side holding the pose. So wind relieving pose, which is actually when you hold the knee. Breathing, taking one more breath, and release. And then from here, rolling up yeah, with that bent knee over towards your right side, scooping the hips around, so straightening out the spine a little bit more. Maybe bringing the left arm out in a T. Maybe turning the head towards the left. So two breaths, two more breaths. Here sinking, allowing itself to sink into the ground. Breathing. And from here lifting up. Coming back to center. Centering your spine. Again, walking the heels underneath your knees. And then we come uh, back again towards the curling, the movement of the spine. Now, if you like, you can bring your hands behind your head. Now, with your next exhale, you can lift the head, the elbows forward, curl. And then with an inhale, arch your spine, widen the elbows wide. And then with your next exhale, when you curl, bring the elbows up over towards one side. Inhale, lower, arching the spine. And then exhale, lifting up, curling, coming over towards the second side. Inhale, lower, and arch the spine. So we'll do, do a few more, if you like, as many as you want. As, you, as deep as you would like to. Noticing how this feels. So can, again, you can do this slow or very slow. When we do this as a slow movement, it's more calming to the, the nervous system. It allows us also to really observe what's going on in the body. Which side feels more difficult than the other. There's some tightness. So let's do the last round here. Alright, so when you're done, let's come into bound ankle pose. Soles of the feet together, knees wide, they're bent, arms wherever they want to go. And then take a few breaths. Breathing now into the belly. Taking one more breath. From here, let's bring the knees up. Right now, either you roll towards the side and lift up, or you come into a rock and roll, moving back and forth a few times. And then from here we come around on our hands and knees. So you're welcome to use a blanket underneath your knees or a towel or whatever underneath your hands. We move a few rounds through cat and cow. So with an exhale we round the spine and then with an inhale we arch the spine. Exhale, chin into the chest, pressing the mid spine up and then with an inhale. Leading from the chest, opening the chest. So do a few more. Notice how this movement now feels different than when you were on your back. One more round. Let's come into a downward facing dog. So we bring the hands a little bit more forward, spreading all the fingers, grounding down. We tuck toes, lift the knees, and reach up. Maybe 
you walk your dog first, bending one knee, pressing the other heel down. Any movement that feels good in your body. Right. And then find some stillness, so let the heels reach down, they don't have to touch. Knees can always be bent. So in downward facing dog, we always are looking as a priority for a straight spine. We ground the hands down, pressing into all the, yeah, the knuckles of the fingers, especially the index fingers. Take one more breath. Now let's bring the knees down, coming into child's pose, any version of child's pose. Knees can be wide, knees can be together. Have the feet pointed. And your forehead is down. So in case it's not down, you actually can bump fists or stack hands. But if it's down, maybe you roll your head from side to side. Take one more breath. And then from here, let's lift up. Back to tabletop and back to down the facing dog. Maybe two more breaths. Steady breaths. And start to walk your dog. Pressing one heel down, bending the other knee, and then slowly walk your feet forward towards your hands. Or bring your hands towards the feet. Come into a forward fold. Knees can be bent. Feet hip width apart or more. Letting the head hang, shaking the head no. And yes. Maybe grabbing opposite elbows. Swaying a little bit from side to side. And then release the arms, bend the knees a lot, we're rolling up, so tailbone comes down, belly hollows in. We're pressing into the heels and we're lifting up. And then from here we come to our mountain pose. I'm turning around so just that you can see me better. So feet about, yeah, hip width apart, and hip width I mean these hip bones. If it is better for you, you can widen the feet. And let's lift all the toes, spread them, and then let's bring the pinkies down, one after the other. And then at the end, the big toes are lifted, and the big toes then come down. We lift the big toes, one after the other. So all feet, all toes are spread and lifted. And then feel your inner arches. Keep these inner arches, bring the toes down. Right. Releasing the arms. Let's lift the heels. Coming down. Let's lift the toes. For this one, toes only. Mount, stay down. And then inhale, lifting the heels. Coming down, lifting the toes. And let's do two more. If you like, you can lift arms. Reaching up all the way. And then exhale, coming down. Lifting the toes and one more. Inhale, lifting up and exhale, coming down. Right. Let's do a little bit more with the feet. You can hold on to a wall if balance is a challenge. So come on, on the top of one of the big toes and then try to move around this big toe. So any circle like movement. Massaging the toes, massaging the mounds of the toes. Notice what's going on, going, then switching directions, going the other way. And release. All right. And we switch legs. So coming on top of the second big toe and you go in circles or anything that, yeah, yeah, maybe feels like a circle, maybe it doesn't look like it. So notice whether this side feels different. 
then switch directions. Alright, and release. And back to mountain pose. Oops. So feet about your width apart, grounding down. So we lift from the chest. We lift from the crown of the head, shoulders slightly back, belly slightly in. Taking a breath, feel how you ground into your feet. And let's work a little bit with side bending. So we're lifting or bringing the arms halfway up. Then with your next inhale, and I'm going to mirror you. So with the next inhale, lifting that right arm up and coming over towards the left side. And then with an exhale, coming back to center. And we switch. So inhale, lifting the left arm up and coming towards the right side. And back to center with an exhale. So inhale, we come into a side bend. And then with an exhale, we come back to neutral. So do a few on these. Try to stay in one plane. Go as deep as you want to, checking in with your shoulders, notice where you feel the stretch, so when you come into the side bend, is it more around the hips, the ribs, or maybe the shoulder, we do one more round, moving with your breath, And release. Let's draw shoulder circles, moving your shoulders, if you can, in a big way. Maybe closing your eyes if you're comfortable, checking in how your shoulders feel. Go the other way, noticing the shoulder blades moving. Maybe you hear some popping. And release. Coming back to our side bend, we're adding a twist. So now with your next inhale, when you lift the left arm up and you come over towards your right side, bring that bottom hand behind you and turn a little bit around. And then with an exhale, we come back to center. And then with an inhale, coming over towards the other side, so the top arm comes forward, the bottom arm behind you and you come into a twist reaching and then move with your breath the exhale brings you back to neutral the inhale lets you come over might feel a little bit like a swimming motion a freestyle move with your breath notice what's going on in your body knees can be soft just one more round into a warrior two. So I'm mirroring you, so I'm stepping the left foot out and right foot goes back. So warrior two, we want to have that front knee over the heel, that front foot points straight forward. Back foot kind of slightly forward but mostly to the side. And then to first check out yeah, what works for you, how deep do you want to go. Let's lift the front toes, spreading them, so grounding, finding connection, grounding all the mounds of the toes down, bringing the toes down. Maybe lifting the toes of the back foot, bringing them down, grounding more into the outside of the back foot. And when you're ready, lifting arms, softening shoulders. You can look over your front fingers. Notice what you feel. Does it feel like a good stretch? Feel like hard work. Let's add some movement. So with your next inhale, straightening the front leg, lifting the arms, and then with an exhale, coming back to your warrior two, bringing the knee out over the heel. Inhale, lifting up, maybe look up if that feels all right. Exhale, coming back to your warrior two. We do three more. You can go on your own pace. Moving with your breath. Okay. 
And then when you're done, you come back to your worry to take another breath. And from here, let's come into a side angle pose. So we reach forward, elbow above the knee. Bring the upper shoulder a little bit more up. So upper hand can stay yeah, behind the low back. Or you bring that upper arm over your head. You also can do any variation that works for you. So maybe you use a block, maybe you bring the hand down. So when you sink into the pose, try to hug the legs together for a little bit more stability. So notice whether you're sinking into that lower shoulder, can you draw the shoulder a little bit more back? And then we're coming out, warrior two, and we straighten the leg. Let's pivot the feet around, coming into a wide-legged forward fold. So for this one, if you have a towel or a strap, you can use that behind your back. Otherwise, we are interlocking fingers behind the back. And if that's not working, keep your hands on your hips. So outside of the feet are parallel. Feet, the distance is about the length of one of your legs. Lifting all the toes, spreading them. So grounding down, grounding into the outside of the feet. Now choosing your hand position. And inhale, lifting up. And then with an exhale, coming to a forward fold. So letting your head hang, keeping the hands on the low back. Maybe shaking the head a little bit or not. Maybe lifting the arms up. Take about three more breaths. Notice what's going on in your body. From here, bring the hands towards your hips, squeeze your legs, and then from here, we're lifting up all the way. Coming back to a standing, and then towards the same side. So for me now, I'm mirroring, so it's the left foot out, and we're coming into a triangle pose. So maybe you shorten the stand a little bit, but still try to keep that back foot more forward, and the front foot all the way forward. So reaching forward and into your front arm, bringing the hand down somewhere along the leg. Upper hand can stay on the low back or you bring your arms, that arm up towards the ceiling. Take a few breaths. If you find you're locking that front knee, straighten the leg a little bit more. So pushing, can push the hand into the leg and the leg pushes back. Here we, yeah, actually let's come to a standing, wriggling, releasing, and we're switching legs. So switching sides, now your right leg is forward, or your second side. Checking in, so lifting the front toes, grounding the mounts of the toes down, creating your inner arch, bringing the toes down, grounding into the outside of the back foot. Front knee gently out so it's over the heel and then lifting arms and you breathe. Take another breath. Notice what's going on around your hips, the low back, the legs, the feet and we add the movement. So with an inhale lifting up, straightening the front leg, exhale coming back to your warrior two. Inhale, lifting up, and exhale, coming back. And do about three more. Move with your breath. And stay here for another breath or so. And let's come into side angle pose, so reaching forward. Elbow above the knee. So check in here with the low shoulder, drawing a little bit more back. Leaning a little bit more back, bring the low tailbone down a little bit more. You can stay here 
or maybe that other arm goes over your head. Finding lots of length here on your, yeah, on that side that is straight, grounding into the back foot, into that upper arm. Then from here we're lifting up and we come around. So let's do, yeah, bringing, coming into a goddess pose. So the feet point out and we bend the knees. So knees go into the direction of the feet. Either staying here, or if it works for you, lifting the arms. The elbows to the height of the shoulders. Maybe you stay here. Maybe you lift one heel, bring it down. Maybe you lift the other heel, bring it down. Maybe you lift both heels, coming down. And then with an inhale, we're lifting up and release. For triangle pose, now turning that back foot in so it's slightly forward. Maybe it's a shorter stand, your front foot points straight forward. So reaching out to your right hand or your second side and bringing the hand down. The option to keep the hand down, to bring the arm up. So notice what's going on in your body. Staying with your breath. Take one more breath here. And then bend the front knee. And we lift up. And we come around, bringing the feet together. Right. And then we come to the front of the mat. Taking another breath in mountain pose. And then let's move to a half sun salutation. So with an inhale, we're lifting arms. And then with an exhale, coming to a forward fold, you can bend the knees. Inhale, we lift halfway. Arms are straight, legs are straight, spine is straight. And then exhale, we fold again, so the upper body rounds. And then with an inhale, we lift up all the way. So leading from the chest, coming up, the arms can go wide. And exhale, hands to your heart and to your side. Let's do one more. Inhale, we're lifting up the arms. Exhale, hinging from the hips. So straight spine. You can always bend the knees. Inhale, lift halfway. Exhale, fold. And then inhale, we're lifting up. All the way. And exhale, hands to your heart and to your side. Inhale, we lift up the arms. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, lift halfway. And then exhale, bend your knees a lot. Bring the hands down and step back to downward facing dog. So either stay here for a few breaths, keeping your straight spine. Or if you like to work on blank, you can come forward on blank for a few breaths. You always can bring the knees down. But keep that tailbone long, press into your hands, so the knees are down or up. Maybe you take one more breath. And let's all bring the knees down. And we land on the belly, coming down. And maybe bring the hands underneath the forehead and then sink into the ground and have just three breaths. Breathing into your belly, letting your whole body sink down. From here we do a, yeah, a round of locust pose or locust lifts. So we turn the head towards one side, the arms are along the body. With your next inhale, lifting the arms, lifting the legs, finding length. And then with an exhale coming down, turning the head towards the other side. Inhale, lifting up, squeezing the shoulder blades, arms reach back. 
and then exhale, lowering down, head turns towards the second side, or the first side here. So go on your own, with an inhale you get fully engaged, finding locus pose, and then with an exhale you lower and you let go. About two more rounds. Leading, yeah, when you lift up the head, leading with the chest, so your head, make sure your head doesn't curve back or crank back all the way. Keep some length in your neck. Let's do a last round. And release. Take one more breath. And then from here, let's lift up to a sphinx pose. So we bring the elbows underneath the shoulders. Now, if that is already intense, in your low back, you can work, work the elbows a little bit more forward. So try to keep the elbows the same distance as your shoulders are. Then reach a little bit more into your heels, so finding length in your back body. And then pull your lower belly in. So that usually should help to keep your low back happy. So pulling the belly in towards the spine. From here, lifting into the crown of the head. So we yeah, are coming into Sphinx pose. Now if you like to do a little bit more, you can press the hands down and glide, try to scoop or push these, pull these forearms back as you want to scoop yourself a little bit more forward. But you find a lot of length into the crown of the head. Your belly pulls in all the way towards the spine, keeping the tail from long. And release. Coming down, stacking hands, bending knees, letting the feet dangle from side to side. Releasing the legs, coming around, so just roll around on your mat. And then we actually will really use blocks, or one block. So bring a block next to you. So stay here for three more breaths. If you feel, feel your low back, certainly feel free to hug the knees to the chest. Let's do one round of active bridge. So if you like, you can use a block between your legs. You don't have to, in case you don't use a block, imagine a block. Walk your heels underneath your knees, arms along the body. And then push into the heels. Lift the hips up, push the hands down. Gently squeeze that block. Take another breath here. Bring the arms over the head, lift the heels, and then slowly roll down vertebra by vertebra. And take the block out. From here we push into the feet, we lift the hips up. And then let's bring the block underneath the sacrum. So the block has three different settings. Choose the one that works for you. Don't put it underneath the low back. It tries to go down on the sacrum, so it should feel good in your body. And then take a few breaths here, feeling the supported bridge, an opening of the chest. Take one more breath. And maybe now you take a few more breaths just where you are, or if you like, and 
sometimes it's helpful actually to just grab the block and hold it. Bring one knee towards the chest and then the other. And then from here lift the legs up. So we try to bring the heels underneath the knees. So if your backside of your body feels tight and the legs are forward, bend the knees a little bit more, bring the heels a little bit more over the hips. Version of Vipadevikarani, a supported shoulder stand. Take a few breaths. So this pose should feel more effortless. A wonderful way at the end of the day to recharge or anytime actually during the day. 10 50 breaths, just being here, breathing. Maybe you stay here, maybe you add a little bit of movement, so widening the legs. bringing them back up. So whatever comes to your mind, maybe finding like a split. And be creative. If you open the knees wide, feet together. And take one more breath. And slowly come out, so bending the knees, can bring the feet down one at a time, let them land, lifting the hips up, taking the block out, then from here let's bring yeah, one knee to the chest, pump it, and then let's come into a figure four. So lifting that one foot and bringing the ankle in front of the other knee, and then from here either keeping that yeah, lower leg to the foot down or lifting up and interlocking fingers around that lower leg. So keep the front foot, keep it flexed. The other foot can be soft. And then have a few breaths. So you're looking for a stretch on the outside, in this case of that leg that's in front. Maybe you move a little bit from side to side. And release. And we switch legs. Lifting the other leg, bringing the ankle in front of the knee, of the second knee. Either keeping the lower leg down or interlocking fingers around it. So choosing your version of figure four. Keeping that front foot flexed, which helps to actually protect the bent knee. You want to stretch the muscles and yeah, the IT bend more of the hip, not so much of the knee. Soften the shoulders. Take another breath. And release. Coming back to a windshield wiper. So knees bent, feet wide, as wide as the mat is, arms wherever they want to go. And then go with the knees from side to side. Next time your knees are towards the right side, stay here. Maybe the other arms go a little bit more towards the left. Now you can stay here for your spinal twist, very soft, easy twist. Or you bring the arms out in a T, you bring the knees together and more up towards that right arm 
lowering the knees down. And then check in. So maybe use a block between or underneath the legs. Maybe if that shoulder lifts up and it doesn't feel right, bring the arm in. So modify whatever your body needs so you can enjoy this twist. When the knees are a little bit more up, the hips are more stacked. That way, yeah, a little bit of a rounding in the low back. Often that feels better. And then just take a few breaths. You're sinking into the ground, allowing yourself to sink into the ground. center, wiggling a little bit, releasing the feet down, arms over your head again, windchill viper. Next time the knees are towards the left, keep them there. Maybe the upper body goes a little bit more towards the right. Just breathe, keep your belly soft. Maybe that's your spinal twist for today. Or maybe you move on the arms in a T, the knees up, more together, and up towards the left arm, towards your second arm. And then maybe a block underneath the legs, maybe the opposite arm in. Try to keep the head towards the opposite side. So modify as you need to. Take a few breaths. And breathe into your belly. One more breath. And then from here we lift up. Coming back, yeah, maybe bring the knees to the chest. And then any last movement before we come into Shavasana. So maybe heavy baby pose, so you grab the feet from the outside, the knees are wide. If it is better, you can bring the feet together the tailbone down a little bit more. Maybe you straddle your legs, any amount, maybe one at a time. Maybe you crawl up to a little ball, keeping bring the feet together, the hands around. One or two more breaths. And So bringing the legs down to the ground. Let's come into bound angle pose, knees bent, feet together, soles of the feet together. Notice your shoulders, are they up on the ears? Then push into your head, lift the shoulders away from the ground, Fly the shoulder blades more down, and then sink the shoulders down on the mat. And then straighten your legs. Maybe use any yeah, blanket or jacket or whatever to cover yourself. Straighten the legs, bring the arms along the body. And then make fists and tighten arms, legs, your whole body. And release. One more, making fists, tightening arms, legs, your whole body. Make faces. And release. And soft. Soften your whole body, let the feet roll to the outside, turn the palms up, close your eyes, keep the head in center, soften your jaw, and then enjoy Shavasana, the stillness in your body and in your mind, and I will call you back.
Take a deep inhale and a long exhale. Inhale all the way in and hold your breath. And softly exhale all the way out. Bring movement back into your body with your fingers, with your toes. Bring your arms over your head and come into a full body stretch. And then from here bend your knees one at a time, bring them towards your chest. Maybe you pump them. And then roll towards your favorite side. Curling. Keeping the eyes closed. And then when you're ready, lift up to the sitting, to a sitting. So keeping the eyes closed, the head stays heavy, lifting up. And then any sitting. Let's bring the hands to our heart. And then let's close with one round of all. Let's all exhale and fully inhale. And let's remember that we always have the choice to come back to our breath. Namaste. Thank you for joining. Have a wonderful day and I hope to see you next week on the other side so that I can sense you, feel you and hopefully I see you soon on the mat. Namaste.